believe it or not, I'm going to share a couple stories with you. And you can decide whether you want to believe it or not. You know, but first, what is belief about? Well, a belief is certainly different from a knowing. A belief is something that changes over time as you mature, as your life experiences change. Beliefs that you used to deem as absolute truth, you recognize, mm, not so. So here are some stories that will sound, will probably sound a little bit weird, but which ones are real and which ones are imaginary. Many years ago, I was involved with a spiritual community and we were holding a special meditation at a friend's house one night. So I drove up, I uh, wasn't the first one there. That's okay, I knew I was in the right place at the right time. I go up to the door and I turn the knob. I can't get it, the door's locked. Okay, it's time for the meditation to start. I'm not gonna ring the bell or knock on the door because I don't wanna disturb anybody who's already in a meditative state. I go back to my car and I'm getting ready to go home when all of a sudden I see somebody else from the group drive up, park the car, walk up to that same door and walk right in and close the door behind them. I thought, <laughs> something's not right here. I got out of my car, went up to the door, again, went to turn the knob to go in. It's locked again. I can't get in. I thought, no, <laughs> something's not right here. I saw them go in. So as I was going back to my car to go home, guess what? Another couple drove up, parked their car, walked up, opened the door, went in. And now I'm starting to go a little bit bananas, right? Well, what would you do if that happened to you? So I decide, well, I'm going to give it one more shot because I usually will make an effort three times in case there was something I was missing the first two times. I go to get out of my car and the door locks. I unlock it and the door locks. I unlock it and the door locks. And this went on for five minutes every time I unlocked my car door. It immediately locked. I couldn't get out of my car. I couldn't <laughs> go up to that door again and see if I could get in. I went home. Do you believe it? Does that make any sense to you? Does anything like that ever happen to you? Well, here's another thing that kind of has a lesson to it. When I was working on my doctorate in psychology, I had a professor who it was quite not interesting being in class with him because he'd open the textbook and he'd read from it. Whatever our assignment was, he'd simply sit at the desk and read aloud. And I remember noticing that there was maybe one, two people in the class who got what he was saying. And inside myself, I said, wow, I wish I was an auditory learner so that I could take in what he's saying because I was feeling really frustrated and in my textbook I couldn't open it and look at it and when I was aware of if you asked me any information on any subject I could see the page exactly where on the page it was and the information that was there I was an auditory learner okay so fast forward a few months I was working in crisis care. I was attacked, suffered a brain injury, impacted my visual center that's in the back of your brain. And I couldn't use my eyes for 17 months. I was no longer a visual learner, but guess what I was? It took a while for my brain to clear, but when it did clear, I was an auditory learner and I still am an auditory Tori Lerner. Do you believe that story? Has anything like that ever happened in your life? Here's one more thing I'm going to throw at you. I mentioned that first brain injury. 
And it just distorted everything in my way of thinking, including my ability to reverse directions. So when I would go to the rehab center each day, I get there in 30 minutes. Why? Now, this was back before the days of GPS. So I would go on to a site, like I think it was called MapQuest. I get the directions. I write them out. I'd have them in the car on the dashboard for me. And I would read them. And I'd get there. However, when it came time to go home after spending the day there, it took me two hours to get home. Why did it take 30 minutes to get there, but two hours to get home? I had temporarily lost my ability to reverse directions. You know, you see directions, it says, make a right turn at this intersection. So you figure, okay, I'm going to make a left turn. I couldn't do that. I couldn't translate something that seems so obvious and so simple. So I used to guess. <laughs> I used to guess how to get home. And I go down a road and it'd be a back road. And I'd say, wow, I remember going down this same road before. And a half hour later, oh, I remember going down this same road before. And that went on, took me two hours to get home. Do you believe that story? What would you have done in that situation or a similar situation? Things happen in our lives every day. And we record not the actual memories, because what we record that creates our memory is our interpretation of an event that has no meaning in and of itself. And in fact, every time you recall that memory, guess what? You change it a little bit. And the next time, you change it a little bit more. So that after a while, without realizing it, because you're not doing it intentionally, that memory that you had, which is really all made up because it was your interpretation and somebody else would have had an entirely different one, yes. But your own interpretation isn't even recognizable to the memory that you originally told yourself was accurate. So the only time in reality that is reality is right now. Nothing in your past. Your past is all made up. I just explained how that happens. It can't be in your future because the future hasn't happened yet. The only time that's real, the only time that you can take an action is now, right now. So what are you going to do in your own life to make the change so that your life makes sense because you're living in the only time that's real now? On the subject of living in the only time that's real is now, do you have some kind of change you wish you could make in your life? If I had a magic wand and I said to you, I'm going to wave this magic wand, what's the one thing you want to change? If you go down below and you tell me, and if you ask for me to contact you and give me contact information, I will get in contact with you and show you how you can make your wish, your desire, a very real possibility in your life. You know, you hear me say it all the time. Suffering is optional. Suffering is something that happens in everybody's lives. Sometimes we get hurt. Sometimes things that definitely don't make us happy occur in our lifetimes to us, to somebody who's important to us. Sometimes we go through an illness, an injury. The thing is, who you are inside is never changing. Who you are, your spirit, 
is never touched by all these things that physically can touch or alter the body that you're temporarily in. And, you know, there's a way that you can alter if you're feeling sad, if you're nervous, if you're depressed, if you have a hurt, an injury, if you had a condition going on. I know one of my colleagues said that this certain state went on for 55 years. And then it was very quickly relieved. I'll tell you how. But you got to contact me so I can talk with you. Because I don't have one blanket answer for everybody out there. You know, I'm very grateful that you came to join us here today. I am Reverend Allie Beerman. This is Let's Get Metaphysical, Connecting Heart and Mind. And you, my epic adventure seeker, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and download First Steps on your spiritual path because it'll open your mind, and more importantly, your heart to the world that you're desiring to learn about. Only have a little bit of knowledge or some sort of feelings. Remember that everything that connects you to the universe does so through your heart, never through your ego mind. When you go to sleep at night and you're not thinking a thought, your mind doesn't exist. Go ahead over to our website where you can watch or listen to any show. In fact, I have a new link now. If you're listening to the show through Apple Podcasts, you are seeing right there a very accurate, I was really impressed with how accurate the transcription is of the show. Because I used to spend over an hour transcribing each show, and now Apple does that for us. And if you're not listening to us or watching us somewhere where you get to see the transcript, if you wait until Tuesday, I release the show Monday, wait until Tuesday, and I will be adding the very, very accurate description at a new link. It's interesting, isn't it? AI really does support us in very many ways that are beneficial, that make our life not just easier, but safer. And you always want to have awareness because AI can also be full of mm, something not desirable in your life, not something you want to follow, not something you would choose to do. Audible has a very special generous offer for you when you click the link in the show notes. You get to download the audiobook of your choice, Spend 30 days looking around at stuff you won't find any place except on Audible. I've been a member of Audible almost since the beginning. I have at least 95 books in there now. And what's really cool is because I'm an auditory listener, I can play my audio books Anytime I'm doing any kind of activity, cooking, cleaning, exercising, working out. Oh, and just to throw out something helpful for you. I'm thinking that I want to start teaching again. And I always taught my classes live in person. Well, that's not going to work when you guys are all over the planet. I know last time I looked you in 36 different countries. So what I'm going to do is start teaching just short pieces, like maybe 15 minutes of some stuff that you can't possibly know because I'm the only one who teaches this specific stuff, the specific way I do. That can change your everyday life, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about the world. And it just keep following me in the show notes and I'll let you know when I start it because it's not going to start for another 
three to four weeks of just looking at my calendar. Anyway, I thank you again for being here. And I really appreciate your supporting us and continuing the podcast by becoming a member of our community. And the link for that is also in the show notes at Patreon. You'll get some extras like being on a live Zoom call with me every single month for as long as you're supporting us. Remember to always enjoy. That's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment, because everything you see or taste, touch, smell, it doesn't happen out there. That's where you get your senses stimulated, but the interpretation happens within. I look forward to being with you next time.